ProVision Mentorship is one of several strategic focuses of ProVision Solutions, Inc. I'm Jim Ewing, and mentorship can make a difference. This is one of several interviews with those who've experienced mentorship. Learn from their experiences. Then take a moment and share your experiences on our blog, ProVision Mentorship. We were pleased to get together with Doug Paquette, Executive Director of the Edmonton Regional Immigrant Employment Council, and continue our discussion on some important aspects of mentorship. Thanks for sharing your insights with our audience. Oh, great. Thanks, Jim. Um, as, you, as you said, uh, I've been doing uh, work with immigrants for over eight years, uh, especially in the area of integration of newcomers, professional newcomers. Uh, prior to that, I've worked in the nonprofit sector in community economic development for about uh, 26 years, working all over rural Alberta and including uh, a, a short stint in South America. Uh, but primarily my work has been in the area of community economic development and seeing people sort of reach their potential or communities reach their potential um, and aspire to their dreams. Uh, the Edmonton Region Immigrant Employment Council began in 2008. I was the original executive director and uh, basically we looked at at the beginning was how are we going to help newcomers who are coming to this country mitigate some of the barriers they're facing here in Canada. There's discussion that goes on from time to time about the advantages or disadvantages to having a formalized versus informal type of a mentoring relationship. And I'm just wondering if, if from your perspective and what you've seen, do you see any advantage or disadvantage to one over the other, formalized versus informal? Well, we obviously run a formalized mentorship program, and I think the advantages of the formalized approach is that it may be more strategic uh, in terms of and explicit in terms of what is expected in that relationship whereas an informalized mentorship experience maybe uh, the advantages may be less strategic and may but the advantage of a, an uh, informal mentorship relationship could be that it has more flexibility and may meet needs as they come to be, uh, or as you discover your own sense of what you need. Um, so, but the formalized approach ensures that we say, okay, well, we've got certain objectives. You as a mentor and I as a mentee, we're going to get two or three things done in this four-month relationship. And so, it's it's basically ensuring that those things are done. Um, and it, an informal relationship would be a little bit more. Um, like I say, a little bit more uh, flexible and may have some advantages um, as opposed to a formalized. Now, the advantage of an, a formalized um, program like ourselves, we do a lot of group work. So we and we have a, a, a manual that accompanies the, the program and we have a start and an end point. So that, uh, you know, again, it's something that you can plan for, that you can anticipate and count on or even you know, sort of quantify at the end, it's done, this is what I was able to accomplish, and now I'm moving on. Whereas an informal relationship may be a little bit uh, 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 less outcome oriented, well, uh, or maybe just too, a little bit more flexible to the needs that you have. Is the matching process important to the success of the mentoring relationship or experience? And any thoughts on how to improve that? Mm. You know, it's a, it's a big part of what we do in our mentorship program and, um, it, you know, we take a, a lot of care in, in determining who should be matched with whom. So when we have a civil engineer uh, that is looking for a civil engineer mentor, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that we're going to make that match on the outset looking at both just the skill sets. 
what we do is, is we look at some of the background, what kind of work that they've done in civil engineering, and then look at some of the, the background, of, let's say the mentee, and is there some congruencies or uh, some overlaps or some commonalities that we think that might be um, a little bit more interesting and, and make the mentor a little bit more comfortable in providing uh, feedback to the mentee. So we started off by doing a lot of the matching ourselves, we coordinate that. But what we've done since probably for the last year is we've gone to the mentors and shared the resumes with them. And it could be one or two or three folks and they look at them and they review them and they say, you know, this one gentleman or this one woman, she looks like it could be a good match for me because we have some some commonalities, we've got some, we've worked on similar kinds of projects. I think that match may work better for me. So they become complicit in, and, and a part of the selection process. And, and the idea is that we want these relationships to work. So of course, you know, all of our um, process is about getting all of the information we can uh, from both the mentor and mentee so that we can make that relationship but the, the last part is for the mentor to participate in that selection and then that way and it's not a guarantee believe me but it's I think it, it becomes a little bit more um, uh, that the, the mentor takes ownership of the mentored relationship from the beginning are there any success stories or things that just kind of stand out an experience that you felt was just overwhelmingly positive? We do over 120 matches a year, so we've got 120 great success stories every year. And uh, But one that comes to mind for me is a gentleman who's originally from, uh, from Peru and uh, was is an in, uh, electrical engineer. And he went from one day being in our mentorship program and making $12 an hour to the next day working at uh, a fairly major uh, engineering firm here in the city uh, and probably making about $120,000 a year. Uh, so that to me is, it says, you know, it, it it's, it's a very sad story to see some of these folks just surviving in our city and but seeing them you know sort of having great success and and that companies take advantage of their skill sets their knowledge their brain trust and and using it to their to Edmonton's advantage to the business's advantage um, and uh, and to see them and his family thrive today here in Edmonton and I think that says a lot about certainly I would like to say about our program, but it also says a lot about the city of Edmonton uh, being a welcoming city and a, a place to make a great start in your career, especially well, in the case of the mentors, a mentee, uh, a lot of them have had a great start in their own home countries, so they've had to restart. So I'm proud to say that, you know, we are a part of that uh, picture, uh, that success story, and, and uh, I'm proud to say that in Canada we do do this. We do give people a leg up and using the business community as a part of that solution, and I think that makes a lot of sense. If someone was thinking of becoming a mentor or looking for a mentor, what words would you pass on to them as they would, would ponder that scenario? I would say dive into the pool. I, it is an, uh, it's a transformative experience. I mean, for anybody that's been a mentor in their lives, I think what it does is it takes people and reminds them that they themselves have been mentored at one point and somebody has given them a leg up. And here's an opportunity to give back, but it's, it's beyond that. It is um, it is a, a professional development opportunity, it's a leadership opportunity for you to participate in and, and you can be a part of somebody else's story and I think uh, we can all say that if we look back in our own careers there have been many that have been part of our own stories and I would say be a part of somebody else's story. Doug Paquette, thank you for your time. Thanks Jim. Now it's your turn to share your experience with mentorship. Visit our blog, ProVision Mentorship. Make the investment in mentorship today for your success tomorrow.